Hello everyone, in today's video, we will be building a user management app with Superbase and SwiftUI. This app, uh, we will be using the Superbase database uh, together with the role level security for restricting access to only authenticated users. Uh, we also use Superbase Auth to implement a signing with magic link. And in the end, we will use uh, Superbase storage for uh, storing and retrieving uh, profile pictures uh, for the user. Uh, if you get stuck while working on this, uh, you can reach out to the full example on GitHub. Just uh, uh, follow this link. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, to First thing, we need to set up our project in Superbase uh, dashboard. So uh, go in this create new project uh, and then we can create a new project, select the organization you want. And let's name the, this as a user management quick start. Generate a new password for the database and select the region that is closest to your location. I'm in Brazil, so choose South America. While Superbase setups our new project, uh, we can go ahead and create a new Xcode project uh, for it. So let's create a new iOS app. Let's name it User Management Quick Start. Swift UI interface. Let me save it on Okay, with the Xcode project created, we can go back to the uh, to the tutorial and check what are the next steps. The next step is to create the database schema for the application. We have two options, uh, use the dashboard or use SQL directly by creating a new migration. Uh, for this tutorial, for simplicity, I will choose the dashboard. Uh, so we just go back onto your project that you created, go into the SQL editor and choose the quick start uh, user management starter. This will create the profile schema and set up uh, role level security along with the storage policies. So you can run that. Success. So the schema was created. We can verify it by going to the table editor. And here it is, the profiles uh, table. Now, the next steps is to uh, create the Excel project that we already did. So let's move on. Uh, we need to integrate the Superbase library into the Xcode project. So copy this URL, go into Xcode. In Xcode, you can add a new Swift package by going to this packages dependencies, pasting the URL you copied, choose the version uh, 1.0 or the latest version uh, available at the moment. Uh, the Superbase library contains several packages. Uh, for this tutorial, we'll be using the, the Superbase package that, is, that it contains all the other ones. So we can actually uh, remove the other ones and keep only Superbase. Uh, if in your case, you need only a, a subset of the packages, you can choose any of them and not choose all of, all of them. So let's add it. Let's go into our target just to make sure that the Superbase package was added. That's it. And now let's initialize a new client. Let's create the new Swift file named Superbase. And then we can, uh, we should import Superbase and create a new Superbase client. So let's use this code. We need foundation for having access to the URL. Uh, okay, so the Superbase URL and the anonymous key, uh, you can grab those on the dashboard. So let's go back to our project. 
on the I think is on the project settings API and let's copy the URL and the anonymous key. Uh, the anonymous key is safe to, to keep on the client side, so you don't need to do any extra thing to hide it. Uh, Al contrary, if it was the, the secret key, this one needs to be uh, stored securely because it has it gives access to to everything by uh, by passing the role level security defined. Okay, next steps is to set up the login view. So I'll copy this, copy this, and create a new file on Xcode. I'll name it Authentication View and copy it. Now I'll go over it, explaining what's happening here. So I created an out field uh, that contains a couple of state properties. Email is loading and one for storing the result. It's just a form with a single field, the email field, and a button for signing in. Uh, when the signing is tapped, it will reach out to the Superbase uh, authentication client by calling the signing with OTP method. Uh, the signing with the OTP will send an email to the to, to this user, or, sorry, to the email uh, that contains a link uh, that once you, the user taps, it should redirect back to the app, and then the app should get that URL that was redirected and use that to create a session. That is done on, on this piece of code. Uh, when we receive a URL, we reach out to the authentication client again and by creating a session from that URL. Uh, one thing is that uh, for this to work, we need to specify a custom a redirect to param. Uh, we define it at this URL, so uh, we need to add this scheme to the app so the, use, the app knows how to uh, redirect back to it. So we copy that and go to the info URL types. And let me add this custom scheme. And we also need to add it on the project dashboard. All this is, uh, is written on the tutorial. So if you have, if you want more information, uh, just take a look at this. Uh, on the project dashboard, we, we need to go on the authentication tab, URL configuration, and actually copy this whole URL here and paste it. That's it. So now we are allowing the, the super base to redirect back to this URL and we define it that our app knows how to to intercept this. Okay, now next step is to create the account bill. So I'm going to copy this and add a new file. Name it profile view. This will be the view that the user uh, opens once he logs in. Need to import SwiftUI. And import Superbase. Uh, okay, so the profile view contains three fields: one for the username, the full name, and the website, and uh, a button for updating the the profile. Uh, once the view opens, it um, fetches the initial profile, so it reaches out to the database, uh, and by building a query that will look for the profiles table and select uh, all data that, where the ID is equal to the current user. We can get the current user by using the authentication client again and reaching out to the session and then the, the user inside the session. Uh, the update profile button, we can also reach to the database 
and then call the update method, passing this update profile params uh, that the compiler uh, is saying that they couldn't find it. That's because we still, we still need to, to add this. So let's move on the tutorial. And here is, these are the, the modules. So let me copy it and add a new file. Okay, so here's the model. The profile will be the model that we use to, to decode the data from the database. And the update profile params is the model that we use to update the profile. Let's try to build it. Uh, let me choose another simulator. Yeah, build succeeded. So now we can uh, move to the next step. The only missing part is the, the entry point of the application. So let's create a new uh, app view that will act as the entry point. So the app view will reach out to the Superbase uh, authentication again and start listening for any authentication change. And then depending on the, the state, of the authentication, it will assign this is authenticated uh, variable and then navigate to the profile or the authentic, the auth view that we created. Uh, this seems to have changed, so we need to update it to auth state changes. And then we just need to make sure to open this app view instead of the content view that we have. We can even uh, remove this. So yeah, that's it. Uh, now I think we can, yeah, I think we can run the app and check if it's working. Okay, the app uh, is ex executing. So let's test it. For testing it, I'll use a temporary mail service. Let me get this email, check your inbox, let's go there, here, confirm your sign up. This should have a, a link that once we tap, it will redirect you back to the app, yes, and that's it, it signed it in, so we got into the profile view. Now we can uh, update the profile data, okay. username, full name, and the website, and hit update. Uh, I think it updated. Let's verify by going on the dashboard, type table editor, profiles. Here it is. We have a, a new profile with the username, full name, and website. Nice. So it's working. Now, one last test, let's run again and verify if we go into the authentication view with the profile um, fetched. Awesome. Now let's move to the next steps of the tutorial. That is the, the bonus. That is to add a profile uh, picture uh, to it and we'll be using storage for that. So the first thing we need is to add a struct that will represent the image that is picked on the photo picker of the, the iOS. So let's add a new, a new file called avatar image. And then add, make a few changes to our current profile view. Let's add this true state variables and that's import photos ui we will add a new section into our form that will have the the picker let's get rid of this plus signs uh, okay so we added a new photo speaker and also a, an image when the avatar image is uh, filled. 
we should also load the, the image. So let's add this at the end of the view. So every time the image selection changes, the image selection is changed on by the photo speaker. So every time that happens, we will call this load transferable uh, method that we need to add it. Uh, here it is. So this load transferable will try to load a avatar avatar image from this image selection. This avatar image is the one that we created uh, before. Uh, okay, so what else? Uh, we should update our update profile method to upload the image and store it in our profile. So let's do it. Um, let's create this upload image uh, method. Okay, this upload image will get the data from the selected image and use Superbase storage for uh, making an upload. Now we should use that inside our update profile uh, button tap it. Uh, okay, so before that we can uh, make a simplification on our uh, models. So if we go into the models, we can get rid of this update profile params and use this new profile object. So we don't have this anymore. We have only the profile. And now we can use the image URL we got before. Uh, okay, with all this in place, I think we can also already uh, upload images. Uh, let's try that. Let's hit update. And let's go into the dashboard again. And we can see that we have uh, a new value on the avatar URL. If we go into the storage tab, we also have the, the image uh, uploaded here. So the only missing thing is to and download the image uh, when we load the screen because if we run the app again, we lost the, the image selected. So let's do that. Uh, on the get initial profile method, we just need to uh, download the, the image with the URL from the profile that was uh, loaded. Let's implement this download uh, method. Okay, the download method, it's very simple. Uh, we just go use the storage again. We reach into the avatars bucket and pass the, the path to the download method and then initialize an avatar image with the downloaded data. So let's try it. Yeah, that's it. Here's the image. Uh, let's test the uh, uploading a new image and making a few changes. Okay, I think that should work. Uh, let's test it. Okay, we have now two images and our, on our table, we updated the website. Yeah, here it is. The last thing that we didn't test it is the sign out button. So let's tap it and see what it uh, what it is. Yeah, that's it. It signed it out. Uh, let me show you how that sign out works because I think I forgot that. On the profile view, we have uh, this toolbar button, and we just call the sign out method on the authentication. The sign out internally will erase the storage session. And as in the app view, we are listening for any change in the authentication state. It will uh, emit a new value here. And a session will be new. We will assign false to this authenticator that will put the authentication view again. So that's what, that was what happened. So yeah, that's, that's it for, for today. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, let me know.